roughly Megatron. Oh, and actually is. What's good, my beavers, brethren? Time to swoop low on the telephoto and get super weird about women. Cause this is Babriel. And while we're doing gimmick episode title cards, let's throw in a third thing. Yes, indeed. Today we're going to check out both a toy and a knockoff of it. In a potentially recurring segment, I'd like to call Knockoff Face Off. Because I got a lot of knockoffs and I got to do something with them before the heat death of the universe. This is Transformers The Last Night Voyager Megatron and Weijang Defamation Era Rensora. Fight! Now then, much as the Bayperl Initiative is about celebrating and lifting up the Bayverse movies, by the by the time we get to Transformers 5, even I'm starting to flag, I think this is the sequel that feels the most like a weird trip. Not in the sense that it's so far out and wacky, more like nothing makes sense, the visuals keep changing, it's pointless to try and understand or keep track, you come out of it feeling sort of spun out and depressed and it lasts all f day. But the one positive I think we can blanket agree on is that Megatron looked really cool. And he definitely took very well to the movie's medieval Game of the Rings aesthetic, which jacked the Dinobot's sword and armor style guide and just applied it to everyone with varying results. I never thought it was a good fit for Optimus. Steelbane and Dragonstorm and all the generics missed me entirely. And there's literally no in-universe reason for Megatron to have adopted the look. I mean, there is usually an on-screen setup or at least an explanation for his ever-changing sicko serves, but it seemed like this time he looked like a knight because the production team decided we're doing knights. So, knights it is. What was he even doing in that movie? What was his motivation again throughout the nine warring scripts? What was he, destroying God or something? What do you really want, Megatron? To go home. Oh. What a bastard. But who cares when the design goes this hard? Get a load of Prince Harming here. Presenting pure power through this mesmerizing Middle Ages vibe. Proudly puffing up his bellicose asymmetric breastplates. Inscribed all over with gorgeous gothic lines and ancient engraved energy. As though forged by some cosmic master blacksmith. And the armored motif somehow gels seamlessly with his functionality as a transformer. Like, guess what he turns into? You can't. It's gone. It's integrated so well. Like the nose cone, it's a jet by the way. The nose cone folds up so tidily and doubles as weapon storage. The intakes look badass drooping off his utility kilt. And I love how the wings store on the legs in a casual angular wraparound. They don't even look like kibble. They're just giving cool cargo shorts. Heads are right, bestial bauble with an extremely cursed creeper face. Love the implied underlying head jelly and check out that gnashy golden grill. Bit of Cenobite in there, a bit of Ultron. Sadly, he's not quite complex enough of a toy to have the optional face mask, but it's good, right? I love it. I love the tusk. Arms are bringing the badness with the intricately ornate techno detailing and the mix and match pauldrons. There is a touch of disheartening hollowness in the forearms, but I love the neat little shoulder flaps, which maintain the look while facilitating movement, which is pretty good overall. I mean, we're missing a hip swivel and a wrist twist, but we're doing all right, okay? We're getting it done. Legs are luxuriously athletic, hiding some fine ass thighs behind these generous skirt folds. Love the lower legs and all with the boxy wing stash, built in knee knives, knives, bonus ankle guards, and oddly animalistic strong sad monster hooves. Let's put a pin in that. Colors, it has to be said, are very gloomy. Like I've had to dress even darker and whack up the exposure. He's all the most dismal shades of gray with like overtones of charcoal and slate. Man brought the whole quarry. but. It's kind of a vibe. He looks heavy. There's real gravity and weight to it. And like, what's the alternative? Get it wrong on purpose? Like the Dinobots? Like High Moon Bruticus? I'm good. We can deal with Grimdark. We've got the occasional thrilling pop of Dijon mustard. We'll live. Anyway, for weapons, big knight of the long knives here has loaded up the built-in fusion cannon flame spewer, sporting a seriously strange design with a curious cross section and a very unusually placed hinge for the full gold fish gob effect, along with this mighty Mega Blade. I don't know why I'm always so slow on the uptake with Megatron having a sword. Oh, Megatron with a sword, as if it happens so often. I guess it just doesn't really come over in media. He's usually all laser cannons and flails, but when they do choose to play up sword have a Megatron, it rules. Like this massive half moon pit and pendulum rune blade is just too sick to exist. It's so ostentatious and distinctive, and it's the perfect compliment 
moment to Big Travis Knight's killer curves. Look man, Transformers 5 did a lot of things wrong, but this medieval Megatron was definitely the gnarliest knight around. I think what puts it above other Bay Megatrons for me is its cohesion, its clarity of purpose. It simply asks, what if a suit of armor was a monster? While others were more like, what if a cutlery drawer was a spaghetti? This is the Dark Souls of Transformers, or at least the Dark Souls 2 of Transformers, which I suppose makes our next guest the Elden Ring of Transformers. It's the same thing, but bigger. Behold the overblown malignant majesty of Wei Jiang Ren Sora. God. So this shameless charlatan is the quintessential example of the oversized knockoff, or OSKO, a somewhat unsavory offshoot of the third party Transformers subculture, wherein the manufacturer simply yoinks an existing toy design, gives it a size upgrade and a bit of a tweak, and bangs it back out at a modest markup. This, my friends, is the dark side. Ren Sora is an unsanctioned shock and awe showboat that forced digivolves the Megatron concept from a solid 7 incher to a spectacular, instantly arresting centerpiece to rival even the haughtiest high end MP. And the appeal is visceral and automatic. Everything's enhanced, blown up to double XL proportions without the usual floaty bloaty knockoff nastiness. It's disproportionately heavier and smoother. The motion is just divine. The details pop tenfold in this heightened, hyper real decadence. Even the colors are more extreme. The darks are deeper, the highlights bougier. Finished with this euphoric pseudo metallic sheen and sublime cybertronic glyphs, you can practically feel the beat of its hateful heart. It's even got its own original artwork and poorly translated fiction. In robot mode, Sora can launch rocket claws, change into whips and double space, waving it. His two arms were a mass of cannons. I don't remember that from Kingdom Hearts. They've even addressed a couple of my galling gripes with the toy. Like it does something about the forearm gaps and throws in an extra wrist twist, which lets it go absolutely ham with the see-through red sword. God, that is doing something to me. It's just so powerful. I can see why certain collectors go nuts for the OSKO scene. This is wild. It is Osco wild. Ren Sora is pure dopamine in a box. A deeply immoral, illicit indulgence, single-minded salaciousness at suspiciously affordable prices. Something this intensely orgastic has to be illegal. And it is. It's completely illegal. So illegal, in fact, that in 2020, the Wei Jiang factory got raided by the Rossers. Ooh, you hate to see it. And I'm not sure how serious I'm being. Should have known they were sus. Transformation is kind of a joy? Well, it's tough to know how you're gonna get from that robot to any kind of alt mode. And even then, it still feels like it's doing the opposite of what you expect. It's just so neat how the breastplates pop off and his arms huddle up. The legs and wings are crazy fun. And I'm here for the cannon snap and tuck. It's a surprisingly tidy and alarmingly entire conversion. This can't be the same toy I was holding a minute ago. Where's that robot gone? And the alt mode is a totally transfixing creepy crow cryptid. It really tickles that semi-permeable membrane between the movie's moody militarism and sci-fi Cybertron silliness. I literally had to check if this was a real jet or a made-up one. But it's so mean! Look at that nose, man! That is malicious! The wings are so distressingly far back, like a pickaxe made out of scythes. This is a vision of death. Friggin' Transformers crossovers Grim Reaper edition. Do you think it has guns, or does it just stab you? Couple of details I love here. These intakes are so Sick, man. Like, on the robot, I really thought they were thrusters. The actual thrusters are perhaps a touch weedy, but I'm all about the crispy honeycomb engine block, the cheeky fuselage sword storage, these big buttery battery flanks and the cockpit full of pus. And is it Christmas? Cause I see some mistletoes. Ah, hey, hey, hey. You know what? It's a good job this alt mode landed on its feet. Cause I understand at some point, Megatron was intended to turn into a dragon which would have rocked. I mean, Megatron's done some of his best work as a dragon, and it had totally tracked for this movie. Ooh, that tail looks familiar. And remember those feet? It's starting to add up, isn't it? But the resulting slender sky slicer is an absolute beaut. An absolute. It's probably the most Megatron you can get into an alt mode. 50% jet fighter, 50% dragon, 50% space whatever. And yes, he is that extra. And true to form, Rensora swipes that idea and guffaws away with all the credit by simply 
doing it bigger and fancier and bypassing all the development costs. Like, you know when you make a joke and nobody laughs and then the guy next to you says it again but louder and everyone loses their minds? Yeah, that. And God, I really want to finger wag and give you stern words for liking this, but it's bloody good, isn't it? Look how hard this bangs! Oh my God! Look at the detail! Look at its lethal wingspan and murder-worthy mass! It is simply big and heavy and spectacularly sexy. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it sets my receptors pinging, my brain's happy, and I can't do anything about it. I'm not above this. I'm not better than this. This is amazing. I get it, all right? I get the appeal. Especially seeing as, at the time, Rensoras were easily as, if not more, available than Megatrons. Why wouldn't you? The oversized knockoff scene is a tempting and easy hole to slip into. But, come on, it does cultivate a sort of churlish, minds bigger mindset that just gets on my tits, honestly. It's nice but it makes people weird. Because it is, ultimately, Stolen Cloud. It's a sketchy bootleg bastard that owes everything to the original toy. Without the excellent work of the Hasbro design team, Wei Jiang would have nothing. And indeed, nothing's what they ended up with. <sighs> I feel like we should do something. Should we, like, pour one out? Tell you what, let's just do the galaxy shifter thing, yeah? Wei Jiang, this one's for you, you creeps. Conclusion, Transformers 5 Voyager Megatron is absolutely savage. There's some serious swag in the room here, and he knows it. And what's wild is that this is still the latest on-screen movie Megatron. Like, he wasn't in Bumblebee. We don't know about Rise of the Beasts yet, as of this video. And real talk, it stands up. This is peak Transformer toy design. This is a toy from six years ago that feels like it came out yesterday. The construction feels very now, very timeless. It's screen accurate, it's in scale. You can see Seriously slap this in a studio series box and just reissue it. This toy needs another batch. Because in spite of the mind-mashingly moronic movie it sprang from, everybody deserves a go on this magnificent, marvellous, mad, 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 mad Megatron. So cheers for watching, big thanks to Brian in Georgia and uh, Ben's Collectibles. Please do join me for more Baypril before the month is out with any luck. You want to subscribe, don't you, dude? You better. Later, kids. <laughs>